Thank you, Benoit. Hello, everybody. It's, um, it's been a while. Thank you for being here in the room. Thank you for being in your rooms, at your homes. It's sort of like phantom box seats. We know you're out there. We just can't see you, and that might be good. The last show I had, the last time I was on this stage doing this was in April of 2019. It's been a long time. We were supposed to have two shows last year, but something happened. Oh, you too. All right. Was, wasn't just me. And when you are a creative artist and you have to make art by necessity and there are no stages and you can't have an audience, you do other things. So I got a hold of several people who I've worked with before over the years, some for a very long time and some recent acquaintance, and we grabbed microphones, cell phones, video cameras, online conferencing, and a marathon two-week editing process, and we told the story a different way, ways that are not necessarily what you would consider theater, but nonetheless, it was something that it's what we do, it's what we have to do. It's, I could have taken the video and put it up on YouTube, which will happen eventually, but that's not theater. Theater is a very specific thing. Theater is gathering in a room, or gathering in your rooms, facing the same direction, focusing on a bright spot on a dark stage, and listening to humanity. And that's what really this was all about. It's what I've said before, since we can't caress each other, we can caress the story. And so this is the story of what we've been going through, the people that we've connected with, the situations that have frustrated us or saved us, and that's what this is all about. So my friends, this is Deliverance. Can you hold on just one minute? Thanks. Okay, I will talk to you later. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yep. Bye. Oh, that was amazing. Uh, I haven't spoken to this girl since college. And there she is out of the freaking blue. Yeah, this will probably make me sound like a horrible person, but, and I'm not, but I don't think I ever would have reconnected if it wasn't for this whole pandemic thing, you know, but it's good to get some personal benefit out of this worldwide catastrophe, don't you think? I guess that's one way of coping. Right? God, it's so wild. Megan, that's her, she called her sister Felice because her mom needed a plumber, and Felice somehow knows my mother, who is a plumber. Oh, I don't think I've ever met a female plumber. Oh, my mother loves plumbing. Yeah, she's part of a group of women called the Drain Darlings. Well, it's a small but very passionate field. So anyway, she called her, and then she called her, and then she called me, and here we are. And we're only like a couple of miles away from each other after all of these years. God, isn't that wild? 
Wild. Anyway, so you are... Oh, the food. Yes, thank you. Yeah, sorry, I got here as fast as I could. I, I was just trying to get my next location. Oh, no, 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 you're great. You're great. I swear, I just ordered a few minutes ago. You're amazing. Yeah, it's all my fault, though, because these two only eat when they decide it's mealtime. Sometimes it's 4 o'clock, and other times they clamp their little mouths shut until 8.30. You have kids. Do I ever? That's like I'm endlessly on call. Yeah, they're watching videos right now. Something that would make me want to put spikes in my eyes if I had to watch it with them. <laughs> or something educational about making nuclear reactors out of macaroni, you know. We don't want to stifle their creativity. Satsuma, put your brother down! No, 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 not like that! <sighs> Twins. <laughs> Satsuma's the girl. The boy is George. We each got to name one. How I became the sane one in the relationship, I will never know. <laughs> but she says um, Satsuma is a family name. I don't even have a joke for that. <laughs> She runs a very successful gallery, socializes with artists and politicians and mob bosses with illegal cash, you know, that kind of crowd. But I just try to ignore the whole thing, you know? She was in New York when all this crap, went, oops, I shouldn't say crap, there's little ears. When um, all this stuff came down and the um, airline canceled a bunch of flights, so she, has been in a hotel in Queens for what seems like years. And I'm here, holding down the fort, sharpening the spears, pouring boiling oil over the ramparts, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, here's your... You know how some kids hate broccoli? Or they only eat chicken nuggets? Yeah, mine, they'll eat anything, as long as it's in a taco. But not supermarket El Paso for these children, my friend. No, you can't pick up fast food drive through It has to be made with heirloom, mixed demolized, hand-ground Mexican masa harina, preferably prepared by an 80-year-old woman in Oaxaca, you know? It's like they can feel the fingerprints on the tortilla, you know? They say, Mommy, I can taste the terroir. <laughs> Isn't that cute? God, I could wrap a rat in one of those things and they'd eat it. Last week, our usual place ran out of corn and the only thing I could get for dinner was <laughs> flour. And they threw it at me. They're five. Oh, yeah. you know, it's a good thing we're done with feeding. I don't think I could do that in a taco because I had to nurse both of them. And I would say, why do I have to do all the work? And she says, well, you gave birth to them. How is that fair? <laughs> I, I hope I got very cute tacos for you, for them, for you. Uh, it should be okay. I hear good things about the place. Yeah, no, they're always great. Always great. Back when we used to actually be able to go out, the owner would give the kids like a little bit of dough to play with and God, for a brief, glorious moment, it was quiet. You know, other moms, they, um, they tell me about how their kids get mad and stomp into their room, slam the door shut. And I keep thinking, why not me? <laughs> anyway, God, thank you for feeding us. This must be very stressful work. <laughs> oh, it's not so bad. It gets me out of the house. Out? Of the... Uh, sorry, um, stay safe or something. You too. Supper is here, little darlings. Oh my god, it is not crap!
Uh, Mr. Santine. Uh, hi, I'm Danny. I'm here with your order from Cheese Louise. Show me that paper on the bag. Oh, I, I can just read it to you. There's just a couple of items. Uh, hold on. It's... Uh, listen, kid. There are two things in my head that still work. My brains and my eyes. Can't hear worth a damn, but I can read just fine. Just show me the paper thing. Hold it up. Okay, now you read it. Quiz. Okay, sure. Um, you've got uh, three grilled cheese sandwiches. Three grilled cheese sandwiches. That's my Thursday order. So this must be Thursday. <laughs> I leave them around the house and take an odd nibble when I feel, what's that word? Peckish. There's one left over from last time. You can have that bag if you want. There's an old but allegedly safe chair on the other side of the porch. Sit, have a sandwich. Join me, why don't you? Um, I don't know, I should really uh, finish this round. Judging by how this conversation has gone so far, I didn't think you were in a rush. You're not very good at this delivering thing, are you? Uh, I mean, um, I do it part-time. It's more a favor for a friend, really. It's not my career. Uh, normally, I'm over on the south side. This is my first trip up around this area. South side? What's there? Malls. A bunch of really expensive houses, mostly. I don't go down there. <laughs> I don't go anywhere, but I actively don't go there. Yeah. This, what do you, they call this thing we're supposed to be doing? Uh, shelter in place? That's the one. Shelter in place. Social distancing. That's a laugh. Almost as funny as social media. Like alone in a crowd, but the opposite. I've been sheltering in place in this place for the past 35 years. Old people are like that. Don't go out much. Everything I need is right here. In place. Well, uh, I like your place. Thanks. I have a lot of books. I radio this pad thing my niece gave me. Oh, you're surprised I can use modern technology, smartass. I'm very, very old. I'm not stupid. When I was born, television was just being invented. Everything the world has ever present, produced in my entire life has been new technology. I've seen air conditioning, microwaves, copy machines, atomic bombs. That one was not so good. Computers, satellites, that clicker thing, remote control, stuff you can order on the internet. I love stuff you can order on the internet. Uh, yeah, you've got a whole pile of unopened Amazon boxes out here. What's in those? No idea. Every few days, I randomly order something. That way, somebody will be knocking on my door every now and then in case I should suddenly drop dead. Go ahead, take one. Could be a teddy bear keychain, or one of those blankets that look like a taco, or a phone, one of those phones... Those phones, uh, help me out here. Help with what? What do you call those phones? Uh, iPhone? No, no, that's not it. <laughs> guy that, that, that takes the pictures and the mail and the messages you, you talk, but type, but don't talk. Texts? The texts, yeah. Yeah, iPhone. No, no, what is it? Uh, oh, yeah. iPhone. I think I have one already. You should have known that. Mm. Hey, I didn't order any chips. I can't eat chips. Well, I guess it's a good thing I'm eating them for you. It's for you. You're welcome. Uh, how's a sandwich? It's all right. You don't like it? Doesn't matter to me. Food is food. As long as I have my teeth, I can eat. I have all my own teeth, you know. It's hard to believe, but true. I ate for them myself. A tasting I don't do. This whole mouth area, this, this doesn't work. Um, I don't want to worry you, but I think they're saying that that's a sign of the virus. Relax. There's nothing to do with virus. No plague, no locusts, no frogs, no 40 days in the desert. As long as I avoid anything biblical, I'm good. Got hit in the head with a baseball in 1935. Bam! Took out my smeller and I... I haven't tasted anything in 85 years. I don't think I've ever heard of that, but I guess it's your smeller. 
Pittsburgh, pay attention. Pittsburgh, April. Forbes Field, Pirates, opening day. The Boston Braves have just bought Babe Ruth. He found out the Yankees were getting rid of him when he arrived at spring training in St. Petersburg and his locker was filled with firewood. It's true. Look it up. Anyway, he's playing against the Pirates. And 14-year-old hometown boy Jimmy Santine, me, is sitting in right field. Three, 175 feet from home plate. Pardon me, kid. I love the stats. It's cold. It's starting to snow. The big bambino saunters to the plate. Better world, the word is his lumbers to the plate. 245 pounds he was. He takes the pitch, and it's a long, high ball into the right field grandstand. Career home run number 709. Smack into my kisser. You know that, that thing he used to do when he pointed where he was going to hit? What do you know? You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Babe would point where he was going to send the ball. 22,000 people in the stadium, and I swear... He pointed right at my face because that's where it went. I had a row of marks from the stitches on the ball stamped into my forehead for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great day. And since then, no smell. No smell, no taste. This hair could be cardboard for all I know. Then why do you keep ordering? Because... The woman who owns the grilled cheese place is a nice lady with two kids who need a little help. That's all. I ain't got much, but I can afford a few sandwiches now and then. And the guy's got to eat, right? You know, you know that thing you, you hit with a stick? What do you call it? Uh, I don't know. A, a drum? A tree? Why would you hit a tree with a stick? I don't know where you're going with this. It's, 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 it's filled with candy and shaped like an animal. Oh, a pinata. No, no, that's not it. You know, you, you, you whack it with a stick and then candy falls out. A uh, pinata. It's right on the tip of my, what's it? Tongue? Uh, pinata. You got to expand your horizons, kid. Read a book. Life is like that pinata thing. You either wear a blindfold and whack away at the world like a crazy person, hoping you'll eventually hit something, or you can take a few steps back and wait for the doofus with the stick to crack the thing open so you can stroll over and pick up some candy. Life's rewards, you know. And who do you think everybody's laughing at? Not the kid with the full pockets. But if it wasn't for the schmo swinging away at that paper donkey... Nobody gets nothing. Everybody's got a part to play, you know? Sometimes you got to wait your turn. Life takes patience and smarts. And when it's possible, nice. Life takes nice. That should be a pillow or a tattoo. You got a tattoo, kid? I got one in the Navy on my arm here. It used to be a bird. Now it looks like I got punched a lot. That's life, too. What may now look like a wound was once glorious. And so ends today's lesson. Uh, if you don't mind my asking, Mr. Santine, how old are you exactly? What month is this? Never mind. Uh, it's a joke. A joke. 99. 99 years young. That's a joke, too. Or it used to be. Funny thing is, and by that, I mean not funny at all. My brother died in the Spanish flu in 1918. Seriously? Serious as the plague. I wasn't born yet, but I overheard the whispers. What do you mean whispers? It never came up. Nobody talked about it. We didn't talk about death in my family. Not just death. And not just my family. Death, money, politics, religion. Unless it was somebody else's religion, of course, then it was hysterical or a scandal. Not like it is today. You talk about everything to everybody. Who needs that? Not me. If you were in a war, you didn't tell war stories. If you came home from the old country, zip it, not a word. 
And if somebody died in a mass catastrophe that took out 50 million people, oh, look, there's a sale at Gimbel's. We should go. Nothing was nobody's business. You understand? I only heard about my brother because I slipped out in conversation when I was a teenager. So this lunacy going on now, it's just another day for me. I have beaten the odds so many times. Blues and wars and depressions. I could tell you about depression, my friend. And just walking across the street, none of that could kill me. I'm not going to worry about it now. I mean, you've got to take precautions. Hey, I'm not stupid, okay? Jimmy Santin has lived a long life. He's not ready to check out yet. I don't touch nothing I'm not related to. I don't breathe in nobody else's space. If I can feel the heat coming off your tiny little fevered head, you're too goddamn close. You think some morons who can't figure out how to put on a mask can kill me? I'd laugh at them if it wasn't a waste of my time. Uh, I see those people every day. I gotta say they worry me. Hey, you're young. Compared to me, anyway. It'll do you good to worry about things for a while. It gives you what, uh, perspective. Well, I guess I should let you go. This was nice, this conversation. I'll give you a nice tip. Oh, no, that's not really necessary. There's a charge included. Oh, <laughs> not money. I have money. You want money? Grab another box off the pile. Uh, you know you can return those, right? Yeah, pain in the ass. No, my tip for you is keep doing what you're doing. People are so lonely right now, they can feel it in their bones. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention to who's around you, you know? Most people, I'm invisible. Thanks for seeing me. It was my pleasure, sir. Take care of yourself, and uh, thanks for the sandwich. Not bad for cardboard. Um, pork scallopini, EP parm, because that's eggplant, 
uh, sausage pasta, seed sir, salad, uh, two orders of bread steaks. Sticks. Sticks, sorry. Uh, two pieces of chocolate cake. That's a lot of food. <sighs> well, funny thing is I don't remember ordering all that food. I like all that stuff, but... Who's yelling out there? Mind your business, Father! Did you ring my bell before? Oh, yeah, that was me, sorry. <sighs> is, is that your father? Oh, no, that is Quincy. He's a priest, he was one floor up. It's not important. That is not that much food if you're feeding two people. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. three. Sorry, I, um, no, I, I've been making deliveries in this neighborhood all day. It's mostly been single orders. Um, that was awkward, I apologize. But you said you didn't order anything? That is all for me. Okay. Oh, my metabolism was crazy when I'm under stress, and just in case you haven't noticed, we are all under just a little bit of stress. Oh. I was gonna save the cake for later. But yes, dinner at Megan's, table for one, mm -hmm. and the, uh, Tablecloth around your neck? Oh, I was out of lobster bibs. Damn hoarders. Toilet paper, milk, lobster bibs. Oh, we hate them. We do hate them. I think there should be a law. I think there probably already is. Mm. Great. Now I want lobster. <gasps> Can you call and order me some? My phone isn't working. Uh, yeah, I know. I texted four times and called twice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to say I was running late. Um, we're, we're not supposed to just drop anything off until we can get the uh, delivery on Is that a word? <laughs> on the phone. Is there something wrong with your eyes? Nothing gets by you, Benny? Danny. Yes, I know. I was, flutter, flutter, I was being coy. I thought coy was a fish. Yes, which makes the eyelashes so unusual. Thank you for noticing. I just didn't want you to think I was ordering a family value meal all for myself, which I am, but I didn't want you to think that. Not that it matters what you think, because I barely know you. So. Danny. Correct! Look, I'm lucky that I'm not 300 pounds after all of this, but I have not gained an ounce since college. Um, well, you look, uh, very nice framed in that window. That's either very sweet or really creepy. <laughs> uh, tell me when you find out. I would like to know myself. <laughs> you know, every time I have ever ordered any kind of food, by the time that I wash my hands, go check the camera, the buzzy thing by the door, turn three locks, go down the stairs without touching the banister or the walls, spray the knob, avert my face, and then open the door, there it is. Hey, Krista, fucking magic trick. Well, yeah, that's generally how it works when we can get the other person on the, on the phone. Which isn't working! I am aware! Is that idiot still here? Yes! Hell no, I don't know where it's been. It's been here. It's been right here for hours. So, uh, what happened to your phone? I assume you ordered on your phone, unless there's some telepathy thing going on that I don't know about. I dropped my cat.
I don't care much for being around people on a good day. <laughs> That's what someone it called uh, getting personal benefit out of a worldwide catastrophe. Oh, I've heard that before. Yeah. See, out here by myself, I feel like one of those urban raccoons just roaming the streets while everyone's asleep. <laughs> well, except you don't have to knock over a garbage can for food. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, everything I need, I've got in my car. <laughs> you know that joke people make about um, pressing their faces against a window and they're like really yearning for something? I never expected the faces to be on the inside looking out. It's like practically a horror movie. Oh, no, not practically. It is a Stephen King novel in here. <laughs> I mean, most of the time you all just exist in text messages. Half of you could be robots, and I am okay with that. I'm just not used to talking to flesh faces anymore. Flesh faces? Okay, ever since the lockdown, if I do see anyone, it's on a screen. Like, flat, abstract, like a video game. Watching you talk in three dimensions is so distracting. I can't keep track of what you're saying. Not that I could anyways, but... That is the nicest thing I've heard in weeks. Distracting. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a nice face. Uh, even the sticky, outy, three-dimensional human parts? I, I guess I could get used to them in short bursts. Um, I, I had a cat. I knew you were a cat person. <laughs> What's it saying? Oh, no, did. Um, I, I did have uh, Lucky. Her name was Lucky, but she passed away. Oh, that's sad. And very unlucky. Yeah, the irony does not escape me. You should have tried a bag of rice. <laughs> yeah, there's some things a bag of rice just cannot fix. <laughs> so much for mending my relationship with my mother. <laughs> You need a really <laughs> big bag of rice! Did you know that in 1920 the post office made a rule that you couldn't send children in the mail? <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, why, why would you mail a child? And why do you know that? <laughs> my uncle told me. Well, my great uncle. Well, my great, great, great uncle. Seems it cost 15 cents to pop a kid in the post. Your uncle wouldn't live over on Saxon Street. How did you? Grilled cheese. Right! Grilled cheese is his Thursday order. Yeah. Oh, is today Thursday? Yeah. Did you get a keychain? He gives delivery people these like cheap little keychains, orders from a dozen. Yeah, yeah, it's a dinosaur. A dinosaur and a flashlight. Ah! Oh, you are so lucky! <laughs> I got a superhero kind of thing that turns into another superhero kind of thing. I don't get it. Do you want to trade? Um, yeah, look, I'm I'm gonna go back to the door. Um there's a whole street full of people watching you from their windows, and uh, it's really kind of starting to freak me out. I don't care of what you have in that there grocer sack. I pledge myself to Ashley and all of the good people of Lower 7th Street shall be my witnesses. Mom, mm -hmm. witnesses. definitions of fun. Um, look, I've got a lot of other deliveries, so I'm just going to leave this here for... No, wait! I have one more minute left until my clothes are dry. I'm in the middle of doing laundry. I swear all of my clothes are wet. You did order food, though. What? And you were 15 minutes late! Oh, well, yeah, five of them was trying to get you on the phone. We're never going to get beyond this, are we? I didn't realize there was beyond where which we could get. Well, I don't know, Dan! Strong immune system and well-developed thighs from 
all this delivery business. I could sit artistically framed in my window and gaze wistfully towards the horizon, wherever that is, and you could go score us some soup dumplings, which I now want. Uh, yeah, about that. Um, your food, uh, your probably very cold food. Um, I'm just gonna leave it here on this delivery bench. I guess no, that's what it's for. Just, a, just yeah. a, wait. Let me come down. Oh God. What is it? I need to see people. Like real people, human people. It's like a hunger. You understand hunger, Danny? You deliver food every day. You are the one nourishing us. You! Ah, sounds so foolish. I mean, you're just someone delivering sandwiches. But sometimes you're all we have. I'm afraid to go out. All of us are afraid. In here with our flesh faces pressed up against the window. The ones that you have so much trouble looking at because because it's hard, isn't it? You, you're right. We're mostly alone. I am mostly alone. I am silly. And I ache. I need to see eyes, real eyes. Like human eyes, people eyes. Not on a screen, and not my cat, although he does have beautiful eyes, the little bastard. It's so hard to remember how we were connected before, and it's been months. What happens next year? In the year after that? Even after this part is over, whose face will I ever see again? My eyesight isn't good enough to see the smile or the frown or anything on your face, and if there's a mask, it's just a blank. When you're breathing through a mask, all there is is the sound of your own breathing and the smell of you, and the world gets farther and farther away. We're losing friends and families and mothers and wives and daughters and ourselves. There's not even going to be any fingerprints left, Danny. Just a sanitized, sterile, empty world. And all of us being slowly scrubbed away. What a stupid thing to say on a hundred year later call. We totally um don't open the door yet, okay? Just, um, I, I have to keep my distance. You're, it's the rules, you understand? It's wait.
Everybody, hello. I saw you out there. I saw you watching. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions or any comments or I want to even answer them, but let's see what happens. <laughs> Anything, anybody, no? Good? We're good? Katie Williams is right here. And she is what the entire story hinges on. She was in um, Playwrights Roundtable, put out a call at the beginning of last year for 10 minute video plays that could be done on Zoom and the like about our situation, what we're in. And I don't like writing 10 minute plays because it takes just as much time and energy to write a short play as it does to write a long one. And as my mentor Samuel Delaney says, it takes so much time, I'm trying to stay out of the spot because I can't see otherwise. Uh, it takes so much time to write a bad book, you might as well take a little longer and write a good one. So I don't like 10 minute plays, but I wrote it anyway. It was a very short deadline, it was due in just a few days, and it took me a month. <laughs> and so I missed the deadline, of course. And I showed it to Jennifer, my partner in first read, and she said, I want more. I want it longer. That delivery person must have been to other places, so I want to see that. And so I wrote two more parts, and it became that. That took me a week. <laughs> so the answer to my hesitancy about writing a 10-minute play is to write three of them. And then it all gets taken care of. And so that they eventually uh, ended up taking a piece, the middle piece of that show, and putting it on their online uh, thing. And Ron Schneider and Katie Williams were the two people. And I said, oh, God, I cannot do any better than these two actors. So let me steal them and use them again. And so, of course, Danny became the central character in the entire thing. And I couldn't be happier that Katie was the one to do that because she's just brilliant and natural. And those little asides, the way she goes, ha, is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> on a stage or screen, and so I'm really happy. And like I tell all my actors, you're not going anywhere. I keep people forever. Uh, Luor, Lulu, who was in the last scene, I've been working with since 2004, and my second sh ever show. And uh, Allison was on this stage for my show, Drummer Boy, four years ago. And Ron Schneider, the great Ron Schneider, was Falstaff in Merry Wives of Windsor when Shakespeare was still using Lake Eola, and I was the audio guy in 1997. <laughs> so everything gets filed, and that's how this came about. It's just something that shows what we're going through and shows what we as artists have to do to tell the story. So there's so many different parts of that that had to be put together. There were three and a half hours of material that I had to turn into 35 minutes. So that's it. Thank you for coming. Hey, Jeremy, yes. That was, that was brilliant. Thank you. Thanks for calling it deliberate and not delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Was yes, there please. Any moment when the scene delivery wasn't the vehicle for this, or did you have that from the get go? No, that was immediate. That was what. What are we all experiencing? What is happening to each of us? And what is our common contact with the outside world? And what else is there than that food delivery, that bag? So that was from the very, be before I knew what I was doing, I knew that's what it was going to be, was that delivery. And the name just sort of came from that. Yeah. But thank you so much for coming. And those of you at home, um, if you're still here, Tell your friends, it goes on again at 8.30, which is not long from now. Let them know where the link is and watch. It's a nice show, I like it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.